jumping jacks and a stride. Eight, seven, six. Almost done, guys. We done good. All right. Woo! Done for the day. Hard. Woo! Hi. Well, how was your workout? Man, we're sure hot. And you know, that's the best way to stretch. Your highest degree of flexibility occurs after exercise because it increases the blood flow to that muscle tissue and those fibers become more elastic. Now, if you're injured or for some reason you can't exercise, it would sure help if you could take a good soak in a hot bath. But activity is better. Activity produces 21% greater flexibility than a bath and 89% more flexibility than no warm-up at all. Now, just as it is important to precede stretch with exercise, it is prudent to follow activity with stretch. Maybe you've noticed that the accumulated fatigue toward the end of a workout tends to tighten up those muscles a little bit. Maybe you don't really notice that till sometimes after the exercise, some oh, hours I later. Today. Yeah, you Ooh. tighten up? I can feel it, yeah. Well, regular stretching after exercise will increase flexibility and reduce your risk of muscle strains, tendonitis, and overuse injuries. By the way, if you have recently been injured or had surgery, you need to consult with your physician to assure you're sufficiently recuperated to start a stretching program. Now, what we're gonna do is developmental stretch. We're going to develop or increase your range of motion, your flexibility. When you stretch a muscle and hold it, after six to 10 seconds, it becomes more elastic and it stretches more. And you do that enough, and some of that increased range of motion sticks with you. And remember, this is not supposed to hurt. Just take those stretches as far as feels comfortable. Are you ready? Woo. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, coming down the home stretch of this workout. Let's get you down here on the floor. And let's start on these nice big quadricep muscles. Big, powerful muscle group in the front of your leg. If you will just lie back in line with the thigh that you're stretching, put both hands on the same side. I can feel that already. Oh, you got it? it feels yeah. good. Yeah. Be careful not to put one hand back here because it'll, it'll prompt you to arch your back. If you keep them both here and then lean way, 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 way back. And if that's not enough for you, you can squeeze these glutes back here, squeeze your bum. Bring your pelvis up a little bit, tilt your pelvis a little bit, and put more stretch on those quadriceps. Let's have a look at this muscle group. The function of the quadriceps is extension of the leg. The quadriceps contract to straighten the knee. To test quadricep flexibility, scoot your buttocks up to the side of a table, hug one knee, and lie back. The knee on your extended leg should be bent at 90 degrees, and any greater angle means tight quads. This is very effective. Yeah. I can really feel it. Really is intense yes. today. What's the difference? <laughs> you know, you're really going to feel those muscles tighten up if you're a runner or a swimmer or as a cyclist. Uh, if you play kicking sports, uh, football, that sort of thing, man, you, those, those sports demand stretching there. And when those muscles are too tight, we can create knee problems. The patella or the kneecap moves around, you know. And when those guys are too tight, it causes that patella to track to the outside and that really uh, is the beginning of, of, of knee problems that we want to avoid just by keeping these flexible. You need more intensity, you tell me? Well, wow. if your game, stand up and give a try to a standing quad stretch, which Diane and Lonnie will show you. You're going to hike your instep up on a table or some sort of prop and then hop away from the prop. And if you've got good knees, you can bend that weight-bearing leg. And now, pelvic tilt. What do you feel, guys? Oh, it's oh, intense. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is not meant for folks who have bad knees. Let's see that pelvic tilt again. If you'll loosen Diane and now pelvic tilt. So it's really important that you put that pelvic tilt in there to, to feel that stretch. Now, we can create back pain with tight quadriceps 
One of the quadricep group called the rectus femoris connects onto the pelvis, and when those muscles are too tight, it tips that pelvis forward. It creates an exaggerated arch in your low back, and any time we start fooling around with that lumbar arch, we make it too too much or we try and take it out, we're going to get back pains. In the case of the quadriceps, we exaggerate that lumbar arch by having these muscles too tight. And backache is not fun. Not one little bit. <laughs> okay, let's move to the muscles that work in opposition to these quadriceps on the back of your legs. Come and stretch your hamstrings. If you just leave one foot right on the floor, knee bent, and pull the other thigh right up to your chest. Now extend your leg, knee is still a little bent, and you just snuggle that thigh right up to your trunk, and then you begin to squeak your knee out just a little bit. Only straighten the knee as far as comfortable. And let's have a look at this group, the hamstrings. The hamstring muscles work in opposition to the quadriceps. The hamstrings bend the knee, pulling the heel back to the buttocks. To test hamstring flexibility, see if you can sit up straight with your trunk at 90 degrees to your legs. But if you're forced to roll back and increase that angle, you're too tight. Now the hamstrings, just like the quads, are going to get real tight in runners and cyclists and sitters. <laughs> Sedentary lifestyle produces tight hamstrings because you're basically sitting all day with them in their short position. And, and these sports like, you know, running, um, cycling that are highly repetitive in their movements, those are, those are the sports that will really tighten up these muscles. So you must stretch regularly. I find after stretch. a workout they're really tight, you know, you can really notice that. Do you run? No, not just aerobics. Well, I'm telling you, when Renee and I start running in the summer, our lower body just gets so tight. And we have now sworn every time we run, we will stretch. It just does not pay not to. Now, if you don't like being on your back, perhaps you're along in term of your pregnancy, let Renee show you a standing stretch. We're going to do the same same stretch the same tension on the muscle group if you just put your leg up on a stool or a chair now brace your back put your hands on your leg careful not to lock that knee though don't lock the knee of the leg we're stretching that is the, the leg on the chair and just lean forward and don't you feel the stretch coming on now do with us a real effective form of stretching called PNF, or proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. What was that? Well, <laughs> it boils down to contract release. On the floor, you're gonna press your foot up to the ceiling against the resistance of your hands and maximally contract these hamstring muscles. Do this for six seconds. You're gonna work just as hard as you can. Then take your hands away and stretch. Standing like Renee, you're going to press that foot into the stool just as hard as you can six seconds and then you're going to lean forward and stretch it is important here to breathe normally don't hold your breath don't close the glottis in your throat and valsalva or, or grunt that spikes your blood pressure up and that's a risk and indeed if you have hypertension or heart disease this is probably not meant for you okay ready to work here we go one two come on press the foot three Four, five, six, Ooh. and release. And One stretch. stretch. That is a good stretch. Yes. Now you got a little more range of motion here. We're going to do this three times. You should get a little more range after the third, then the second, and the second, then the first. Here you go. Ready? Work. One, two, three. Come on, put your heart into it and release and stretch one more time after each contraction is a little period of reflex inhibition which lets you take it a little farther last time that leg ready set go one two three come on press four five Six. <laughs> oh, and release. Is Renee working over there? <laughs> <laughs> Long six seconds. Ooh. 
If you'll look in a mirror sometime as you do these three, you'll notice that the third one takes you quite a bit farther toward your trunk than the first. Okay, let's try it on the other leg. You know what to do now. Be sure you breathe normally. Ready, go. One, two, come on, show me your brawn. Press that leg against your hands and release. That's it, just breathe easy and enjoy that range of motion. Hamstrings are, are too tight in North Americans and typically even tighter in men. Right, here you go, second time. Go, one, two, three, four, five, six, and release. Ooh. So it's more flexible than the other you side. You know, it's not uncommon to have one limb a little, uh, a little more flexible than the other. Maybe there's an uneven length in limbs. Maybe there's an old injury. Don't worry too much about that. Almost all of us are just not quite perfect. Okay, third and last time. Give it your go and work. One, two, breathe normally in and out. Come on, press harder and let it go. Ooh, that is nice. You know, in guys, we tend to, to see a lot of muscle strength and bulk, mass. That testosterone, the male hormone, can sure produce that. But it's women who are the more flexible. Some of us species. guys aren't too bad. No, oh, you've got right. pretty good range of motion, Lonnie. I have to All hand right. it to you. <laughs> because these muscles are so tight, let me give you one more stretch. And this would be the most advanced. So if you can't do this one well just yet, don't panic. Maybe you'll get there. You need to lean forward from your waist. Just be careful that you're not compensating and trying to get your nose down there by humping over your upper back. Lean forward from your pelvis. And the goal is to get your chest as near your knee as possible. And if you hang in there a little bit, that's gonna, that's gonna relax for you. You know, the hamstring muscles can produce back pain like the quadriceps can, but in just the opposite way. If the hamstrings are too tight, that pelvis is going to be tipped backwards rather than forwards like with the quadriceps. And we're going to reduce the normal back curve that you have in your low back. And that is just as problematic and stresses the spine just as much as tight quads, which are going to pull it forward. Now look at AJ. He, he is on the tight side for a male, and yet is a good, strong athlete, I might tell you, uh, the Canadian national aerobic champion. He's lived through his tight flexibility. And he likes to put his hands behind to give a little push forward there. So if you're tight, keep your eye on him, because he thinks of a lot of mechanisms that help. All right, let's come over and do hip flexor muscles. If you'll bring one leg perpendicular to the floor with the lower leg, and the back knee on the floor, and try and thrust your pelvis forward as though you're gonna try and put your groin on the floor, and see if you can feel a stretch right here in these muscles. Those are hip flexors. Now, if you can feel a stretch there right now, you're on the tight side. Most people will have to lift that knee a little bit to feel the stretch there. You got it? Yes, I can too. Okay, let's have a look at this muscle group. Hip flexors contract to pull the thigh to the trunk. They bend or flex the hip. To test hip flexor range of motion, scoop your buttocks up to a table, hug one knee, and lie back. The extended thigh should come to rest horizontally. If you can't do that, you're over tight. Now, if you would prefer to stand, have a look at this alternate position. Diane will hike her leg up on the bar. You can use a table and basically just press forward with the pelvis. Do you feel it, Diane? Yes, it's yes. very effective, yes. A word of caution here to pregnant women. Let's switch legs. The relaxant hormone that circulates during pregnancy loosens up your ligaments to prepare you for delivery. And that is particularly effective in and around the back and pelvis. So throughout all these stretches, Pregnant women, you need to hold this to mild stretch. Don't push it, don't make it intense. 
because we don't want to overstretch those ligaments and be warned this laxity in those ligaments can last for one year up to one year after birth so go easy all right let's come back down supine and work on the gluteal muscles muscles in your bum if you will hug one leg up tight and see if you can feel a stretch right in your buttock. Have a look at this muscle group. The gluteals work in opposition to the hip flexors. The hip flexors draw the thigh forward while the gluteals take it backwards. Glutes tend to over tighten in runners, dancers, skaters, and when those muscles are too tight, they can produce pain in the hip through tendonitis, a little inflammation in there, or through spasm, and then that's buttock pain. It is literally a pain in the butt, as they would say. <laughs> so we need to keep those muscles nice and flexible. Try it on the other side. Hoist it up there, just as tight as you can, thigh to your chest. Now, if, if it's hurting, it's not stretching. Don't ever cross over the threshold into pain. When a muscle starts to hurt on stretch, it's actually trying to contract. It's saying, I can't go that far. I can't do anymore. It's trying to protect it itself. That's called a stretch reflex. So it's not constructive to your goals to stretch in pain because in fact it's not stretch. Back off a little bit. Take it comfortably. All right. Let's sit up and try this one. You cross one leg over the other and then pull that knee up. Have you got that? Can you feel it? It feels great. Yeah, I feel that one quite a bit more intensely than I do the one lying down. So just hold that in there and kind of play with it here. Now, let me tell you a little bit about muscle imbalance. When one muscle group is tight, the muscles that work in opposition to it are weakened. The glutes here, if the glutes are tight, the hip flexors, the muscle group we just stretched a while ago, they become weak. And that's it. the mechanism is called reciprocal inhibition. And you try and do aerobic dance with weak hip flexors. I'm telling you, it's hard. Because in aerobic dance, we use so many knee lifts. You know what I mean? How many, how many knee lifts do we do in a year? Hug it up. Try and make it, pull it to your chest and try and make the knee go up. So that uh, you're, you're really making things tough in your cardiovascular exercise if you've got tight glutes which produce weak hip flexors. So that's why a lot of people, you know, bend over that's after right. doing some knee lifts. They, they think they want to take their knee to their chest right. and because they can't make that move, they take their chest to the knee. <laughs> no, it doesn't work. Now, let me, let me switch you again. Here's the most intense of all. If you will bring your foot up toward your face, support your knee out here with your hand. In other words, give your foot a kiss. Huh? <laughs> I want a letter from you if you can do that. Forget it. <laughs> Forget it is right. Be sure you're sitting up straight, that you're not rolled back here. And if you can't do this and sit up straight, you're just not quite ready for it yet. Have a little patience. Stick with me. I'm and gonna, stick with AJ. I'm move back to the other one. AJ is tight, but he stretches regularly. You know, much of your flexibility is determined by your genetic inheritance. It's true that practice helps. Exposure makes you more flexible. But we are not going to make you into one of those human pretzels and join the Chinese circus. <laughs> We're going to develop what you've got by your genetic inheritance. Anybody got it? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine why you wouldn't. It it's real intense, that one. Now, if you'll come back to a stretch that looks almost like what we've done, but think with me here. Instead of trying to pull this up, try and put your knee under your opposite armpit. So pull it well across your chest, pretty strong, and we're stretching the piriformis muscle. Let's have a look at that muscle. This is a postural muscle which produces the stability that allows us to stand on one leg. If you don't like sitting, or you would like a more intense stretch on this piriformis muscle, have a look at AJ. He's taking the same position and standing up with it, 
brace that foot on a table, hug that knee across your chest. Remember, you're trying to get your knee to go under your opposite armpit, although it'll never happen, but that, you can use that imagery. Now, this piriformis muscle is one of your postural muscles, and those muscles produce a contraction to form rigidity or stability that enables us to sit or stand erect. And those postural muscles are under slavish control of your central nervous system. And as you get agitated, they literally get uptight. They, they mirror your emotional and mental uh, tension, and they produce muscular tension. And when they are over tight, we can also get a pain in the rear by a spasm. And what's worse, that spasm in some people can irritate the sciatic nerve. It runs very close to the piriformis muscle. And man, we got that sciatic nerve all upset. We have major problems. We can get pain shooting down the legs, and that becomes a real medical problem. It requires the attention of a specialist. So it is worth our while to try and keep this piriformis muscle in good, flexible condition. Now, as you get big toward the end of pregnancy, it's not real easy to get that leg across your, your front there. But this is a stretch that relieves some of the back aches so common with pregnancy. Let's look at the adductor muscles. If you'll bring your, your soles together, and the feet as close to your groin as you can, then you can use just a little gentle pressure here with your forearms to press your legs apart. Now, if you're up like this, not to worry. If that's a stretch for you, if you feel that, then that's fine, you got an A in the class. You don't have to take your knees right down to the floor. We can do P and F in this position, but let's just have a look at the muscle group first. The adductor muscles contract to bring the leg in to the center line and across. Okay, ready to work? You're gonna try and close your legs against the resistance of your arms. Six seconds, breathe normally. Don't stop, don't hold your breath. Ready? Ready. Go. One, two, are you working? Peak that contraction, come on, and let it go. Ooh. Ooh, now you might want to just bring those, well, those, those feet a little bit closer in. Lean forward and get a good stretch. Okay, second of three tries. Get in the work position. Ready, go. One, two, come on. Make a shake. Some real resistance here, but breathe normally and let her go. Oh, there is a temptation to hold your <laughs> breath there. It is a there. temptation to hold your breath. <laughs> That's so right, good. but don't you dare do it. All right, now enjoy this little window of increased flexibility you've got here. And that's going to pay off in the end. Guys who are tight, and men are infamously tight in this muscle group. This will, this will really begin to show up in increased flexibility, which means sports performance, lower risk of injury. Last time, now you know what's going on. Here we go. And work. Breathe normally, in and out. Pressing those legs together. <laughs> Peak that contraction. Come on, troops. <laughs> All right, this is the best we're going to get right here. If you ain't got it now, <laughs> pull it in and lean forward there. Like all postural muscles, these adductors tend to get over tight just from the tension of your lifestyle, and they are particularly tight in sitters, people who sit a lot, just like the hamstrings. Now, get up and try this one with me. Put both feet flat on the floor. Don't roll one foot over. Make sure that the sole of your shoe is right smack on the floor. This is a right angle. Now you're bracing yourself here on the floor. And just press that down. Can you feel the stretch right in there? Those I like this one. I like this yeah, one too. too. However, if you do not, if you don't like to be all bent over on the floor here, have a look at a standing alternative. You can get your leg up high on a table and produce the same sort of effect. Lonnie is going to shift his hips away from his prop. He's got his, 
his foot up on a step. You could use a stool or a chair. Keep, your, keep both legs straight, both legs straight. Now just shift your hips away from your prop. Can you feel that one? Yeah, okay. If you're down on the floor with us, use your hands to crawl across. That's it, never lose support here with your hands and stretch the other side. I like to see both of these feet facing forward. Now, yet another position Diane will show you. You'll need to use a table. Hike your leg up there, and this time lean into the prop. And you're going to feel that stretch right in those adductors. Good. All right. Adductors done, and mm, do they feel delicious. <laughs> okay, come on down here. Let's do your iliotibial band. You may have heard this referred to as the IT band. If you come down on the floor and cross one ankle over the other knee, try and keep your low back on the floor here. Don't arch up like this. Try and keep your low back snug to the floor. Try and keep your hips as square facing the ceiling as possible. In other words, you're not going to roll entirely forward. Just relax your legs and let them roll a little bit toward the side of your top leg. Yeah? Don't feel much. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Let's have a look at this muscle group. The iliotibial band serves as the attachment for other important hip and leg muscles like the gluteals and the tensor fascia lata shown in pink. To test flexibility for this structure, lean your buttocks up against a table, hug one knee, and lie back. When you relax the extended leg, that thigh should fall right in line with the hip. That's normal range of motion for the iliotibial band. But if the thigh is splayed to the outside, this structure is over tight. And do you feel anything yet? No. What you're looking for is a stretch around the outside, up and down the outside of your hip here. Try it on the other side. Cross the leg over. Roll easy. Keep your back on the floor to that side. Now, if the truth be known, you probably need to be fairly tight to feel this. AJ, have you got it? Pick me. Pick me. <laughs> AJ feels it. Well, I, and I do. I do feel it. He's our, he's our tight man. Well, anyone who doesn't feel this stretch yet, stand up. Here Pick you go. Me. This one is guaranteed. Cross one leg over the other. Weight bear on the front leg, all right? Don't let this foot roll in the back. Keep the sole flat on the floor. Get it way out there. Now thrust the hip of the back leg out. Tell me when you got something. Oh, I love it. I love yes. it. Yes. <sighs> that is such a good stretch for the iliotibial band. And man, if you're a runner, you need to be doing this. This is a postural muscle. It tends to get tight just from the tension of your lifestyle. It is particularly tight in runners and cyclists. And like the quads, it can produce knee problems by causing that kneecap to track abnormally. It can cause hip pain. I think this IT band is one of the most overlooked structures in terms of stretch. And I have begun myself to regularly stretch this. Yes, we this have not been religious about nope. this. <laughs> but we've seen the righteous way and are changing our habits. Okay, up you go. Let's try the other side. You're going to cross the leg over. Get the back leg as far away as you can, but be sure you keep the sole flat on the floor. Weight bear on the bent leg. That's, that's the stable one. And the hip of the back leg is thrust out. You're looking for some stretch on the outside of your hip. That one is just works, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. It's great. So if you're running, you need to particularly give heed to your hamstrings, your quadriceps, and your ITB. Fancy name, iliotibial band. All right, let's come sit back down, and we're going to take this stretch from the outside of the hip to the outside of the trunk. We'll introduce you to the quadratus lumborum. If you'll sit with your legs to one side, hoist your hand over, lean that way, and now give us a little tug, a little gentle pull with the bottom hand. Have a look at this muscle group. 
The quadratus lumborum is a postural muscle which provides the stability which allows us to maintain good posture. Now be careful that you don't roll backwards or even worse, arch your back. Try to stay in neutral here, pulling over. Have you got it? Mm -hmm. No complaints on this one. This one too, this quadratus lumborum, which you're gonna feel all the way up and down the side of your trunk, is a postural muscle and so it gets tight just from, uh, just from the tension of, of your lifestyle. And when it's over tight, we produce poor posture, stress on the spine, and what do we got when we got stress on the spine? Back pain. Back pain. Ugh. Oh, we don't want it. And we don't have to stand for it. If you can do good abdominal training and tighten up and strengthen your abdominals and maintain good flexibility throughout your body, we're so much less likely to have to deal with back pain. You got that over there. Now, you don't have to hold it constantly at the same place. You can let it off and put it back on. Stay in the range of comfort and try and keep the muscles on stretch because the longer you hold them, you see, they're kind of letting go, becoming a little more elastic. Let me remind you there, I see you kind of rolling back. Come on, sit up straight. All right, and bring it right out. Woof, I like that one. Let's try the uh, low back extensors. The muscles down here in the low back, if you'll just roll backwards and hug both knees as tight to your chest as you can. And tell me, do you feel anything in your low back? Not a thing. Not yet. <laughs> no. If you're real tight, you probably already feel something. But if not, you're probably getting a lot of this movement just through the flexibility of your hips. You see, look, look real close. It's the difference between this and this. And we can handicap your legs. You guys take a towel here and roll it up and stick it right on your hips. Now basically that's going to prevent your legs from coming up so tight. So you have to manage this movement now by bringing your whole trunk up there at the bottom. You see, you're not gonna, you're not gonna achieve this position just by tightening in your legs. You're actually gonna have to stretch those little muscles in your low back, the low back extensors. The low back extensors, or erector spinae, pull the back into extension. They arch the low back. Oh, that towel helps a lot. Yeah, better? Much better. All right, come up and try this one with me. One leg extended and one leg across and use this hand as a brace. One hand in the back and now give us a little twist. Now those little erector spiny are really on stretch. Can you feel that one? Mm -hmm. You need to feel that in your low back, but be warned, if you have back problems, this might not feel good to you. And whenever we're talking about joints, hurt is harm. If we're doing something that gives you knee discomfort, then it is harmful to your knee. If we're doing something that gives your back discomfort, then it is harmful to your back and would be contraindicated for you. So bear that in mind and let comfort be your guide. Let's try the other side. So you're gonna use that arm to press your knee to your chest, and then your effort is to turn your shoulder and probably your head back. Just hold that there. Now, it doesn't really matter what the extended leg is doing. If you're a little more comfortable with, with that leg bent or in, what we're trying to do here is put a stretch on the lumbar spine. So if your hamstrings are so tight you can't extend your straight leg, you could bend it up a little bit. All right, come straight again. Just relax your legs here and let's stretch the rhomboids. Can you reach behind, clasp your hands, and raise those arms just as high as comfort allows. Now be careful that you don't just clasp and lean forward. 
or arch your back. Keep your back in neutral and just take the arms up as far as possible. Let's have a look at this muscle group. The rhomboid muscles contract to pull the shoulder blades together at the spine. The rhomboids are postural muscles, so they're going to get tight as you get up tight. They are often over tight in people who have to lean over all day. Like you want to let it off and then put it back on. You're welcome to do that anytime. Architects, draftsmen who might be leaning over a drafting table, or cyclists who are leaning over their racing bike trying to be aerodynamic. Those, those muscles get tired and tight. While we are stretching the rhomboids, we are also stretching the pectoral muscles in the front. Let me show you another stretch. Have you got a towel or rope, something you can hang on to? And bring your hands up over your head and back as far as possible. This is called a passive stretch. That means that the stretch is, is instigated by an external force or a stabilizer, that it's not happening on its own. And a, a passive stretch. Let's have a look at this muscle group. The pectoral muscles contract to draw the arms to the center line. They draw the arms across the chest. A test for pectoral tightness has you lying on a prop with your shoulder off the edge. Now for normal range of motion, your free arm should drop almost to vertical. If it can't come down to vertical, if it can't go that far, if it looks more like this, the pecs are too tight. Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. Whoa! Gosh. I mean, that could be made very, very intense. Be a little prudent, will ya? And now try this active stretch. Just bring your hands back as far as possible. Be careful you don't hyperextend your back. We don't need all that. Just bring your arms toward the back. And that is an active stretch. Everything that's happening here is happening through the strength of your own limbs and active steps. Be sure to press your shoulders down. You get up tight like this, press the shoulders down and back. All right, let's work on the neck extensors. These guys are postural muscles. All these neck and shoulder muscles get very tight as you get emotionally tense. Remember that the back is not gonna arch, nor is it gonna come forward. Put your hands back there and press your head against your hands. That's all you're gonna do here. Now that is a contraction. Now just put your hands down and retract your chin. Pull it back. Let AJ demonstrate. Put your hands up and press. In fact, we'll do P and F. Be ready to work for six seconds and here you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now hands down and relax. Retract your chin. Now be careful you don't just lower your chin. AJ, show, yeah, that's not so much what we want. It's a retraction, a pulling back. Let's have a look at this muscle group. The neck extensors draw the head backwards. Draw the head backwards so you can look up. But when over tight, they produce a poking chin. All right, second time. Now you know what's going on? Ready to work. One, two, breathe normally. Press your head against those hands real hard and relax. Okay. Pull it back, just like a turtle, that's it. No poking chins in this group. <laughs> no siree. Third best and last repetition. Here we go. Okay, go. One, two, three, four. Breathe normally. Come on and let it go. And bring that old chin back. So it reminds me of the Egyptian dancers, you know? You get real good at that. <laughs> okay, those are the upper back extensors. Lie back and let's work on the lower back extensors. You're not working your abdominals here. That's not what we're trying to do. Just bring your head up and press your head against your hands. Ready? Just press. 
up a little further maybe. Now see if you can feel the stretch a little lower down, around the base of the neck. Anybody got it? Yeah. All right. Great. And you may just want to relax now and then. And try it again. Good. Press. Make the stretch feel down a little lower, around the base of the neck and let it off. Now let's stretch the trapezius muscles. Sit up here. You're really gonna feel the stretch here. Put one hand behind your back and pull on it with the force of the other arm. It's gonna look like this. And if you can already really feel a stretch here, you're pretty tight because most people, to get a good stretch, are gonna need to bring this chin around and drop it on the opposite side of the stretching shoulder. That really puts the stretch on. You feel the difference? Yeah, for sure. All right, let's have a look at this muscle group. The trapezius muscles are postural muscles. When they grow tight, you'll feel very tired across the shoulders. The trapezius muscles draw the shoulders up into a shrug. Now, switch over and try the other side. That feels so good, Charlie. You it know, does. I think like like most people, I store a lot of tension after a long day, day at work up in yeah. that area. These muscles get tight as you get agitated. They get tighter and tighter. And you know who else? Runners particularly, beginner runners, tend to run a bit like this. You draw those shoulders up and those muscles get tight. Also, swimmers and cyclists tend to have tight traps. And the stretch goes a long way to, to relieving your general tension. All right, levator scapula. Have you ever heard of levator scapula? Not well, really. <laughs> here's, here's how you're going to stretch it. You're going to just draw that hand back, about in there. You're gonna, this, the feeling you're going to be looking for is right in here. And then you're going to crook this little chin around as though you were trying to tuck it in your opposite shoulder, as though you were trying to get it on your underarm. Have a look at this muscle group. The levator scapula is a postural muscle. It allows you to maintain your head in erect position. Now, seniors, we don't want you to try and force this chin mobility here, this chin rotation. With age, we tend to lose some neck mobility because of some bony little changes in the joints of Von Lushka. Ooh, that's, a, that's a little dive down the street. <laughs> a little joint, Von Lushko. <laughs> Comfort needs to be your guide here. If it doesn't feel good, back off. Let's try the other side. Hand is up and back. And now, for most people, you won't feel it here. You're going to have to manipulate your neck a little bit. You're going to have to aim your chin toward your opposite underarm. Now, have you got it? Yeah, oh, mm, yeah maybe. Really? Good. Irene is such a good model for us. Irene is 64 years old and has lost no mobility in her upper body, and that's, that's really where it tends to go with age. She has maintained remarkable muscular definition throughout her life and has such good range of motion. These neck and shoulder muscles are postural and they are going to m mirror exactly your mental state. You're agitated, they're tight. Let's have a look at the biceps. These biceps are rarely over tight, but this feels so good after weight training or after running. You're going to put your palms on the floor and look, just scoot your bum away. A little further, mate. A little bit oh, further. I love this. I love this. Have a look at this muscle group. The biceps have great potential for strength. They contract to flex or bend the elbow. My biceps get real fatigued from running because those biceps are holding that right angle in your arm there as you run along for an hour. So I, I pleasure myself with this one now and then. <laughs> And, and why not? Yeah, and why not? Yeah. <laughs> Some things are good just for pleasure. Let's work, let's stretch the muscles that work in opposition to the biceps, the triceps. 
These muscles are almost never tight. But mmm, delicious, does it feel good. Have a look at this muscle group. The triceps work in opposition to the biceps. They contract to extend or straighten the elbow. You like that oh, one, do you, Irene? Wonderful. Yes, it really feels excellent for me. Irene, do you stretch every day? Yes, pretty well. I do it some at home and then I do it in class. Well, it obviously works. Yes, it does. It really is. Let's try the other one here. Now, it limbers me up a lot. Well, you know, you think of, um, be, by the way, be sure you don't arch your back here. You're, you're in neutral. You think of, uh, of older people being unable to zip zippers and, and do the hair back there. I mean, that's, that's our image. And Irene is redefining the golden years here. I mean, this woman has the stamina of someone 20 years her, her junior and the flexibility of the same. Uh, she is a golden example to us all. All right, let's move a little lower down here. Let's work on your wrist extensors. What do you feel here? Zippo. Good. <laughs> 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 Terrific. Because if you can feel some stretch from this position, you're really pretty tight. Most people, to feel anything at all, have to put it upright and really pull it in here. Yes, something? Then, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Let me show you an even more intense stretch. Just get both sides equal there. This is the tennis elbow muscle. Over tightness in this muscle group produces pain on the outside of the arm at the elbow, known as tennis elbow. The function of the wrist extensors is to pull the hand up. Here you go. On your knees, palms up, and now easily, gently lean back. And that's as advanced as we're going to get. That really is an intense stretch for the wrist extensors. That's plenty. That's plenty. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> but if you are keen on racket sports or grasping activities like baseball, take heed. You need to do these kinds of stretches on a regular basis. In opposition to the wrist extensors are the wrist flexors. Try this. <laughs> Do you feel anything here? No. no, no. Good. <laughs> <laughs> because most people, if you can feel it here, you're pretty tight. Most people have to turn that down and really put some pressure on it to feel stretch on the wrist flexors. Yes? Yes. A little bit? A little bit. Excellent. Try the other side. These are the golfing muscles. Oh, well, forget these then. <laughs> oh, no, we got lots of them. Maybe you don't play it, Renee. <laughs> but golfers take heed. Golf tightens these muscles and produces pain on the inside elbow. And guess what we call it? Golfer's elbow. And you need to do these kind of stretches on a regular basis. Try it on your hands and knees. It becomes very intense. This time, palms are down. And squeak it back there ever so gently. Let's have a look at this muscle group. This palm view of the arm shows the wrist flexors, which pull the hand down. Yes? Mm -hmm. It's yes. really yes. nice. Yeah. Oh, lovely. And you know, after knitting and some of those kind of things. Now, I'm not a concert pianist, but I suspect that those might get very tired in people who do things with their, with their wrists and hands. Yeah, Let's move now to our lower leg, the, the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscle. The gastrocnemius is the big external muscle here of the calf. Let's come up and put it on stretch. If you take the front leg forward so that you've almost got a right angle behind your knee and press the back heel to the floor, you're stretching this big external calf muscle called the gastrocnemius. Now, don't tell me you can't feel that one. You can yeah. definitely feel this Have one. Have a look at this muscle. Yes. The gastrocnemius contracts to plantar flex the foot or point the toe. The gastrocnemius, again, is a postural muscle, and it is made very tight by chronic high heel wearing. 
That really oh, tends oh, oh, to yes, show, oh, Renee, yes, and you wear them to work. Yes, I do. I love my high heels. It really I tightens too, the Renee. Achilles tendon and the gastrocnemius. And aerobic dancing tends to tighten those muscles as, as well. So you get a woman like Renee who does aerobic dancing six days a week, plus she wears high heels to work. What do you expect? You got tight calves? Don't come complaining to me. I'll just have to stretch. I just have yeah. to stretch. Because I'm not Press reforming. <laughs> Press those. You're not giving up your high no, heels. No. Press that heel down behind there and feel that stretch. Now there is even more intense stretch if you'd like to try this. Lonnie will come over to a stair, a block of wood, uh, a small riser of some description, and alternately drop one heel off the side of the stair. Now that's much more in intense for the gastroc and reaches right down into that Achilles tendon, that problematic tendon that runs down the back of the ankle. Runners aerobic dancers, cyclists, take heed, stretch your calf muscles. Inside, lying beneath that gastrocnemius is the soleus muscle. Come down and try and stretch it. In other words, it's, it's internal to the gastrocnemius. You're going to press your knee forward, but keep your heel on the floor. Take most of your weight on the other leg. And many people don't feel this stretch, so have a little faith and have a look at the soleus. The soleus lies beneath the gastrocnemius and performs a similar function. If you would prefer to stand to stretch the soleus muscle, have a look at this position AJ will assume. You're going to bear weight on the front foot. You always try and put your weight on the leg you're not stretching. And then the back foot is behind. You bring the knee forward and keep the heel on the floor. So show us where you're stretching, AJ. The soleus of the back leg. You could do this leaning against a tree or against a wall. Now let's try the other side. The soleus muscle has as its function pretty well the same thing as the gastrocnemius, but it has a remarkable endurance capacity. It is slow twitch fiber. It is a hang in there muscle. Whereas the gastrocnemius is a fast twitch fiber. It produces short explosive movements like jumping. The, gas, the soleus muscle will just keep on going and keep on going. So if you are putting a lot of miles in on your soleus, maybe you're marathoning, you might like this very intense soleus stretch. But be warned, this is not a stretch meant for anyone with knee problems, past or present. If you feel any knee discomfort at all in assuming this deep squat, it is not meant for you. You would come on both legs with your shoulders right between your legs into a deep squat. Now, most of the third world spends a lot of time. They eat like this, they toilet like this, they birth like this. So this needn't become difficult as we age if we maintain this range of motion, if we did it often enough. To stretch the soleus, now you're gonna need to lean forward, just a tip forward on the forefoot, trying to press your heel down behind. Everybody comfortable right. there? I love this. Oh, AJ, yeah. you don't look comfortable here. No, he doesn't. Up you go. Up you go. Oh, See, doesn't. there's a good example. He, he, could, he could force it, but not, not comfortably. So he should back off to the less intense posture. And over time, you may well find that you can assume the more advanced postures. Well, folks, we have come down the home stretch. How do you feel? How do you feel? Relax. I do too. Relax. Relax. I feel like melting, so oh. we'll just do that. Good on you. Remember to make it pay. You got to do it regularly. Oh, tip to toe. Exercise wear by Reebok. Yeah. Makeup by John Cox at About back. Face. Hair by Jerome. Yes.
You're kidding! <laughs> the it figure.